Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. God bless you, GCBC, and all visitors. God bless you, uh, Dr. Brown, the pastor of Great Commission Baptist Church, Dr. Douglas E. Brown, uh, to First Lady, Dr. Lakeidra Brown, God bless you. Uh, to my sweetie Patricia, I love you. Uh, hello, Miss Chloe, granddaddy loves you. Uh, I explained that we would use Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 12 solely to present a picture of the gospel highlighting the God-ordained discussion over against another gospel to prove that there is not another gospel. Having reviewed the previous discussion, we will continue, now that I've reviewed this previous discussion, we will continue with the fact that scriptures are the authority uh, as it relates to why we exist, at the same time understanding that outside of the scriptures of the Bible, we're left with man's philosophies. And, it, and if uh, man's philosophies and if it contradicts scripture, it explains from this slide, um, if it, this next slide, Ephesians chapter 2 explains the underpinning of such thinking which leads to disobedience. So, John, if you'll show me that first uh, next slide. And so we can see here in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to uh, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So what I wanted us to focus on here, notice I have ye walked, uh, is according to the world. Notice in particular, ye walked, it's an aorist verb, and it's emphasizing to observe our behavior in a distance, how we functioned uh, during this current age, whatever period that you live in, you have a personal testimony providing uh, an influence of something else and not of God. And we know that the Bible calls him the prince of the air. So when we get into talking about other religions, thank you. When we get into talking about other religions, well, it's, it, it's important to understand um, what is going on geographically because each area that uh, the religions were birthed out of, there was uh, new um, things going on in the society, which opened dialogue for other things, not just one particular conversation was going on. And so uh, just like when we get into the, the various religions that we're going to talk about, that there was something that opened the marketplace for the dialogue of there is possibly another gospel, which we know that there is not another gospel. We know that God has, uh, we know that when we understand God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then these three uh, persons of the Godhead are, are essential. If either of them is misrepresented and not discussed within a theological foundation presented in the scriptures of the Bible, we are left with uh, man's theory, uh, man observing and then concluding, unlike the three persons of God, knowing from eternity to et through eternity. So it's very important that we understand these three essentials of the Godhead. Now, with that said, I'm not going to, to uh, go through every different religion and everything related to how they violated Scripture. I just need to accomplish three things, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Because of those three persons, we now have salvation. Those of us who have believed God's word, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And because we made a decision to trust in Jesus Christ, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then the Holy Spirit, on the day that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So outside of these three essentials, there is various conversa conversations to have about these different religions. For instance, what do they believe about racism? What, are their, what do they believe about our politics? What are their ethics? What do they believe about some of the current things that are going on within our society? Long as I am able to show you where each one of these religions have 
uh, moved outside of the discussion of the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, outside of the scriptures. Remember, we've already declared that the scriptures are the authority. We talked from Timothy. We said that it's God breathed, and we know that the prophets spoke, spake in, in times past from Peter uh, when uh, they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So now, confirming God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then I believe that I've given you enough information information that you can set down at the table and at least have that. I was, I remember uh, as a young man uh, having to go out to the, uh, when I worked with my dad and we would go to, I went to the slaughterhouse and he would tell me to go out and kill the animal. Well, the way to kill the animal, either you shot him in the head with a gun or you hit them in the head with a hammer. So if I could help you to hit the head, the ones who have birthed these religions, if I could help you to be able to uh, speak to them then uh, what they're claiming, then I believe that you're, you're prepared to sit at the table. Now, the conversation will broaden. That's why I told us about in Jude that you have to be strategically prepared when you sit down and have these discussions, uh, dialogue with those of a another religion. So now I also just for for clarity's sake, uh, the gospel, you I, t I shared with you to start out to read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 58. If you have uh, attended life group class, you've definitely expounded upon these verses. And the reason I ask you to do that is so that you would be able to um, uh, understand truly what we're talking about when we're talking about the gospel. And then I'm showing you that there is an, uh, suggested as uh, Paul said in Galatians, if any man says that there is another gospel, it's not true because in verse, in, in verses 6 through 12, Paul has said there is not another gospel. John, if you could show me that next slide. And this slide is very important. That's, I just set the stage for you, and I wanted to set the stage. Uh, John, if you'll go back to that next slide. I'm sorry. Go back to the one. And the reason I wanted to show you this particular slide here is... Um, uh, where it talks about you at one time. I want you to remember that at one time there was something that you said. Okay, John, let me see that next slide. Thank you. So uh, we're going to finish up on Mormonism and just a little bit of uh, about Mormonism. Um, Joseph uh, Smith, Mormons believe that the church is a restaurant. Joseph Smith was the founder of the church. Now, uh, Mormonism believed that uh, the church that exists after the apostles had uh, failed to communicate God's word. They, they, they believe that we have no longer have the, the gospel the way God intended for us to have and how humanity was to live its time out on earth. But I want to, I want to uh, clarify some, uh, some important things to know about Mormons and Jehovah Witness, uh, their base suggesting another gospel, which biblically there is not another gospel because we have the gospel according to the scriptures. I already clarified that to you. Let me have that next slide, John. Uh, and so uh, after the one after Mormon. Okay, so this particular slide right here, the reason I put that slide there is remember that you will be able to sit at the table, no matter who is at that table, you can sit at that table and have a, a conversation about whatever religion that they have, but we're solely going to help you to sit at the table to speak to three essential, important things. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you. And so it's, uh, I need to, uh, some key points of emphasis. Restorationists, what they believed is in progressive revelation. They believe that uh, after the, uh, the Old Testament and New Testament, as we know it, called the canon, they believe that outside of that, that uh, the church had moved from what God intended, and this, there was a movement called re, uh, um, Restorationists, and they believe that they had a progressive revelation, and when you remember I told you about the word revelation, come from this, this Greek word uh, um, apostolic, um, uh, in a apostolic, and the idea of being apostolic is to have this vision, uh, being able to uh, capture something that God has uh, said. And so 
We have that today. Some of you probably have interacted with people who said, well, God spoke to me, and they don't have no scripture reference. This is what progressive revelation is, is saying their attempt is to say that the Bible wasn't successful uh, as we know it in the canon. And, and let me say, I would encourage you to understand what that means, the canon. How did they arrive to the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, those books in particular, one reason that I can definitely give you to help you be successful when you study that is, is that they're proving what God said came tr true about his love for humanity, let us create man in our own image, and how he was going to do it. Now, there are other writings that were uh, out there during the time of the canon, but there is something about the canon that every one of the books has some uh, cohesiveness, some consistency, beginning from the Genesis all the way through Revelations. And just like these religions that we're dealing with, they're moving outside of the scriptures. Okay, so now the Mormons... Um, uh, uh, clearly the, the progressive um, uh, uh, approach is that they thought that they, uh, God was still talking to them. Remember, they had had an issue about churches, denominational, who have their creeds. And some of you have been to Presbyterian churches. Some of you have been to Holy, um, the uh, Holiness Church. And some of you have been to the uh, Full Gospel Churches. And there are some things that they say that, and I'm not ashamed to say it, is that there are some things that they say that the Scripture do not line up with. And the same thing with some of the, the those that say they're Baptists. There are some things that they say that doesn't line up with scripture. And so just like these religions that I'm talking about, how they have their particular, uh, they have uh, specific books that they use that they don't deny the scripture, but they take, well, one of them do deny the scriptures and I'll, I'll cover that. But for as Mormons, they agree with the scriptures. They don't have a problem with the scriptures. And so um, when they're, uh, extra material, extra biblical material, they would say it, 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 in, 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 in a somewhat of a nutshell, well, these are my commentaries. Like, you have commentaries, and I guarantee you, if some of you got commentaries that are not consistent than your neighbor's commentary, and sometimes when you're having Bible discussions, there can, cre there can become some, um, uh, some kind of disagreement because you're reading from another commentary and another person reading from another commentary. But remember, the Bible is the authority and the Bible in clar uh, uh, encourages us to study, to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth as if God is right there with you. If you're not really seeking what God has and you got your, all, or your own alternative, you're no different from uh, these particular religions. Uh, remember, uh, now God has, let, let me give us something to help us so that when you're sitting at that table that I showed with you, that you are able to uh, sit there and deal with it in a bit from a biblical perspective. Remember, we're not being exhaustive. We're only providing a snapshot and a further discussion regarding what is taught outside of the scriptures of the Bible, which and, and now if more in depth conversations we do have in evangelism teaching sessions. Now, God provided two main tests for Israel to determine whether a self-proclaimed prophet was legitimate. Have you uh, have and, and having said this within the context of various scriptures, uh, various areas of the scriptures, the Bible of the Bible, the term prophet, um, it has what we call a, a semantic range. It is uh, the term uh, prophet is used in context has to um, has to be understood uh, how God used it consistently throughout scripture in the Old and the New Testament. Dealing, with, so remember I said context, context and contextuality. So the word prophet, you got to understand it in its context as well as contextually, uh, how it works together through God's uh, utilizing a word which simply means one who uh, has insight, but he's inspired by some entity. Okay. And uh, so 
Also, when we're, when we're in our discussion, I, I'm, I want you to be aware of the limitations of the word. When you're looking at the word prophet, be aware of the limitations of it. And uh, the word uh, in the uh, Old Testament, uh, na Navi, and the uh, New Testament, prates, um, to the ideal of the word, to get cut through the, the broad perspective of the word prophet, the end game is captured in, in uh it captured in uh, that you're providing what God has said, learning uh, what has already been said by God. So you have to provide what God has said, and you got to provide what God has already said. So that's what the purpose of the prophet. And why did I, I do that? Uh, next slide, if you would, John. Why did I want to start out there? Because remember when I told you when I would go out to prepare the animal to come in for slaughter, I had to hit the head in order with, with either a bullet or a hammer. So to, to show you uh, just how great our God is, look what he did to, uh, for the children of Israel. And this is how all of this came together. Uh, you notice here in, in this verse, he says, "Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish, uh, diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. And then the next, next slide, John. Uh, and then the next slide says in uh, Revelations 22 and 18, for I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, the, uh, the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the book. So these verses really need to be looked at. And so it's important that you make sure you capture contextually what these verses are talking about. So first, um, with the, the Mormons, the Mormons is that Joseph Smith made all of these claims, so he's considered a prophet. So what we have to do is find out, was he a true prophet? So the next slide tells us that um, what God said to the children of Israel. He says, when you, when you come into the land that the Lord God is giving you, you shall not learn, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be, there shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interpret almonds or a sorcerer, verse 11, or a charmer or, or a median or a necro, uh, ne necromiser of, or one who inquires of the dead. Okay, so thank you. So God when Israel was getting ready to go into, um, into Canaan, God gave them specific orders of being watching out for some of the ones who may have some insight. And some of these various things are currently going on. My first interaction with someone at DV Nation uh, was when we was doing evangelism over here in the south side of Fort Worth in one of the Crowley neighborhoods. And a lady came to the door and um, we began to talk to her about the gospel. And she said, oh, yeah, well, I'm spiritual. She said, I practice divination. And I said, well, where are you from? And she told me where she was from. I won't say the state because some of y'all will think everybody from that state is like that. But she had said that she practiced divination. And so that was my first interaction with someone making that claim that they have this supernatural power within them. And that's the same thing that Joseph Smith and uh, that believed that he had this special revelation that God was giving outside of the scriptures. And that's what this woman was saying to me. And of course, we know that God has already warned us about this. So I was prepared. Okay, so you'll notice that secondly, they, uh, how to reject professing prophets, how to determine and reject those who are incorrect uh, the foretelling of the future. John, if you'll give me that next slide. And look what God does here. I, I love what God does in his word because sitting at the table to have conversations, you're totally prepared to be able to have that conversation. Notice here in Deuteronomy uh, 18, uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 20, uh, has, and what we have here is says that if there is a rise among you, okay, John, I, okay, you gave me the, the, 
okay, this is verse one. Uh, through, I'm sorry, not John's fault. This is me. Okay, Deuteronomy 13, one and three. Uh, just pay, what I want to pay attention is to the word Yahweh. The intent to highlighting the character of God's productivity from the images the scriptures have have proven rather than to depend on a questionable uh, uh, etymology. So what I'm saying is that on my notes, when I highlighted uh, Lord God, uh, that's Lord is uh, Yahweh and is speaking of one who is a covenant keeper. And he has promised to keep his word to Abraham. And so it says in verse one, if there arise among you a prophet, a dreamer of dream, a dreamer of dreams, and give thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of that wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord, Yahweh, the one who's made a covenant, your God, Elohim, has, I talked to you about him, has proven you to know whether ye love proven to you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So with this verse, to order to understand uh, a false prophet, you need to understand that uh, God had told Israel that there are going to be those that are is going to come about, but this is how you are to determine if a true prophet is that you have to look at when he says, your Lord God proven you, so he's telling you to uh, look at God's productivity. God had promised to, to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And you remember, you, some of you remember how he brought Israel out of, um, out of bondage and uh, the pillar cloud and, uh, and, and by uh, day and, um, uh, by, and by night, uh, uh, a cloud by day and by far at night. So God is telling them to reference his productivity. And when a person is speaking to you, if he's not speaking about me, I've already proven myself to be God. So to order to deal with the head, uh, the one who have uh, as the founders of these various religions, we need to prove to, according to scripture, whether they're a valid prophet. Secondly, um, to how we reject, uh, the, reject them as a prophet. John, now that next slide. Thank you so much. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. It actually helps us with this. And so we're able to see here, so 20 and uh, 20 through 22, notice I highlight the word, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of uh, other gods, even that prophet shall die. If they say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shall not be afraid. Notice in that verse 20, I underscored, I highlighted the word uh, presume. So notice, and what I want you to notice, the prophet was not in accord with the word of God, previously made known um, uh, through what God had already said to the children of Israel. So how we know a, a prophet is a false prophet to start with is that they don't say things that align with what we have. They're in inter- and which uh, the main idea here is to introduce to us that this should cause uh, us to have doubt. Uh, to be weary of. And so if I'm sitting at the table having a discussion, as I showed you with that slide, then I understand in my head how to determine if a person that establish that religion, that would be the first thing that we want to establish is, well, is he really a true prophet? Did God say something to him and it came true? Now, if you'll notice the duality, uh, let me see that same slide, John. I need to bring out something here. Notice with the word presume, the prophet was not in accord with the word of God previously made known. The text is introducing to us to understand that 
uh, when, the, when someone does this, it should naturally bring a caution that you should be really aware. And so when people start, even if they're not a part of one of these religions, if, if they start saying things outside of Scripture, you should understand that they're presuming something upon the text which is not there. Okay, and also notice in verse 22 in this verse, uh, the ideal of presumptuously. You remember I, uh, it says up there, if a, one, if a prophet uh, says something and it hadn't come to pass, it might not come to pass right then, but it will come to pass. And so that's what it's trying to capture there. And the perfect per picture of this was of Jonah. You remember when Jonah had uh, went to Nineveh? Well, at first Jonah had his own idea, but God used Jonah to prove him to still be God when Jonah's expectations were outside of God's expectations. But Jonah uh, later was convicted and realized that he was saying something because he already knew what God's plan is. Now, according to the Mormon tradition, uh, next slide, John, according to the Mormon tradition, uh, Joseph Smith has said in, in this vision, uh, next slide, please, uh, in his vision that um, what he had, con uh, the ideals that he had, and so uh, Joseph Smith, was he a true prophet? Was Joseph Smith a true prophet of God? Well, uh, Genesis 3 and 5, we're going to be able to look at these two verses to show that uh, Joseph Smith wasn't a true prophet. Joseph Smith, John, I'm going to come back to that one, but thank you. The Mormons believe that God was a physical body and it was married and can have children. Uh, Jude, um, and there's other passages that's going to speak to this. Uh, so in that passage, uh, also, the, those verses help us to understand what the Mormons believe. The Mormons believe that um, we, uh, we could have be equal with God. And so th we know that that's not true, that uh, we are not, uh, we can, we're not equal with God. And so those verses that we just saw in that, um, that slide, John, if you'll show that to me one more time and let me bring out some emphasis with that verse and then we need to move on, get there in a hurry. Okay, so uh, the Mormons believe that uh, we are in ourselves, once we return back to heaven, that we're going to be gods. And so uh, God, or verse, uh, uh, Genesis 3 and 5 says, For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then you, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So when you hear things like that is said, remember, if a prophet says something that doesn't align with Scripture, we should have doubt. How is it that we're going to be gods when God is clearly, uh, Satan introduced this philosophy? So remember when I use Ephesians 2, I said at one time you walked uh, according to this world, uh, philosophies uh, that are, um, uh, the underpinning is from Satan. And so that is some, something being brought out here uh, within uh, the uh, Mormon's religion that we will be gods. And so, all right. Uh, and so uh, then, then uh, they deny that um, Mormons believe that God was a person. Remember, they say they, the Mormons believe God was a physical body and he married and can have children. But the scripture says, John 4, 24, for God is a spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're talking about the head being a prophet. Uh, Joseph Smith, who received his vision, and I said Manchester, but it was Manhattan, and he went to a, a, a little city, a little community outside of Manhattan where he received uh, these, this information uh, about um, these, these plates, and um, Palmyra is where he received these, some plates, and he uh, uh, claimed that uh, God had told him uh, to move away from the denominationals, and he asked God that who should he join, and God told him none of them. They were all wrong. All these creeds were abomination. All the believers were corrupt. Then Joseph Smith, who is the founder of Mormonism, believed that uh, he got this vision, and uh, in this vision, um, an angel, Moron, uh, Moroni, um, told Smith of golden plates buried under a hill. And so when Smith 
the place revealed in 1827 when uh, Joseph discovered those, he uh, provided two readings of it. The, uh, the claimed angel had given Joseph Smith these two readings of this material. Now, I'm going to encourage you to go, go to the website that I told you about Mormonism and to see all that they have that they're saying. Smith uh, uh, continued to receive revelations telling him to move from New York to Ohio, to uh, Ohio, and to Missouri. Eventually, uh, eventually, to um, the Mormons ended up in uh, Utah. Now, during that time, if you do your your work, remember we talked about church and state. Where Missouri was part of Amer uh, the United States, and Utah had not yet become a part of the United States. So the Mormons had got in some controversy in Missouri, and Joseph Smith ended up getting killed. Him and his brother. And you could do your own research in that. But just to speak to the fact that he, uh, him being a prophet, so you, well, uh, Dr. Allen, uh, other prophets died too. Well, yes, they did. But this particular prophet is totally outside of Scripture. Remember when I, I read to you in those uh, passages in Deuteronomy how we determine if a person is a true prophet and that whatever he has to say, uh, God has already said it and then God has already told him to say it, and God has mentioned it somewhere else before then, and he's using them to tell them, uh, the children of Israel, what's up in the, in the future. Now, when the Israel went into Canaan, the book of Judges is really good to understand what happened there and all of the different uh, nations that was there and what all of the different uh, beliefs that they had. So in order to be able to deal with those, just like what we're having to deal with these other religions, God provided a way to determine what is a, a good, uh, validate what is a good prophet, okay? So Mormons also, what did Mormons believe about uh, Jesus Christ? They first uh, established that Joseph Smith said we're, we're going to be gods, and uh, we know that uh, that was something that has the underpinning of what Satan said, well, you're going to be as wise as God. That's somewhat... Uh, what Joseph Smith is trying to do with uh, the idea that we're being with gods. Uh, okay, so John, let me have that, that next slide. And also you'll notice uh, Mormons, what did they say to us about uh, uh, the next one, John? Thank you. Uh, uh, now, the Mormons, um, they believed that um, Jesus Christ Preexisted in heaven before he came, became a man and died on the cross, rose bodily from the dead and ascended to heaven. Also, the Mormons are taught that all human beings preexisted in heaven before coming to earth. So totally ignoring this verse where it says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed by Joseph, before they became together, she was found with the child, the Holy Spirit. So... To say that Jesus, uh, now you have to be careful with uh, how uh, scripture, thank you, John, when uh, some, th there could be an argument from that camp to say, well, when they talk about Jesus existing in heaven, uh, which he did exist in heaven, uh, but how they show him functioning within the Godhead. Remember the God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. How they show him existing in the Godhead is where the problem lies. And so Mormons believe uh, that uh, Jesus preexisted in heaven and um, Jesus is the firstborn of God's spirit children and the first to have be, to become a God. So it's as if they're saying that he wasn't God in eternity, but they said he was in eternity and he existed. And, but yet he became a person when he uh, did enter into the world, which has some truths, but it's not, uh, does not deal with the scriptures contextually. So they have to use their sources. I would encourage you to go to their website and all of the different literature that they use to use this somewhat of an, uh, if I may give you an idea of what they're attempting to do is that this is a commentary for them to speak to uh, the Old and the New Testament. Uh, and so Mormons believe that, now they believe Jesus is the Redeemer, uh, Redeemer God and Savior, and he is, he is endless and eternal. 
the only, be, uh, the only begotten Son of the Father, through Jesus the Heavenly Father, has provided a way for people to be like him and to live with him forever. Now notice, the, God did say, let us make man in our image, but the Mormons uh, doctoring birth uh, from Joseph Smith who wrote the Book of Mormons based off a vision that he had that he got these golden plates in a, 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 under a hill at Palmyra in uh, New York uh, that uh, what he claims is doesn't align with what the Bible says. We talked about a false prophet. If they say something that don't come true, and the reason I use that over in the Old Testament, and then I, I rush to Revelations to show you that even God has said it from the beginning. When someone talks about what he has revealed uh, in his scripture, if that person uh, sp uh, speaks uh, presumptuous to presumption, presume something, and it's and that's bring into the text, then it's, it's wrong. It's not of God. And if there's somebody that speak presumptuously like you, you, and like I'm trying, I'm explaining here is that in some ways that they have an idea about, uh, God, uh, God, the father, God, the son, the Holy spirit, but it doesn't align with scripture. And so I'm saying that we can use the scripture to prove it. Now you might not understand it right away, but if you continually study it, you will be able to realize that they're outside the will of God. Okay. And so the Mormons believe all men and women or even, uh, uh, wherever to be born included Jesus Christ live with God as a spirit. They believe that we live with God as a spirit in heaven before we came to earth. And this is what they claim. And you can go to their website. God wanted each of us to come to earth to gain experience, learn and grow to become more like him. But God also knew that his children would all sin, die and fall short of his glory. So they have, you see how they can, they kind of twist things. And we, we saw this in that Genesis passage when uh, it, the uh, Satan uh, had said, now their behavior is, uh, is a replica of Satan. Now they can change their way, but the underpinning of what they're saying has the same uh, philosophy that Satan has introduced to us. And, and so we know that there are some trying times uh, in our current culture because we're constantly, uh, uh, um, we're growing. There is all kind of things being said in and around us. And this is how the Mormons, uh, those Joseph Smith, he took advantage of that. His business acumen was par excellent. This, this uh, um, religion is, is grown out, surpassed Christianity. It's, it's, it's a, a big movement out there. But in order to to disqualify them to be uh, uh, what, uh, what Scripture says is do what they say line up with Scripture. It's one thing to have what I said, that their literature is somewhat a commentary to them. If their commentaries were confirming what is already written, then that'd be one thing, but that's not their claim. So if we can, if we can get to the head, we can help. Uh, bring down what is being claimed solely with the scriptures of God. And God, God is so amazing. So not only the, the Mormons believe uh, that Jesus Christ, uh, uh, they believe that Jesus Christ was chosen to be the Savior long ago during his pre uh, mortal life with God. So yeah, that, that does have some somewhat truths. They believe that, but that's not the, what they claim about him, they said that when he was with God, that he was a spirit, which he hasn't been birthed yet, has some kind of ideal of some accuracy. But when they bring him to earth and say that God had uh, 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 sex with a woman and God has a body, then they've moved outside of God the Father and God the Son, okay? And I'll talk about their, how they can't, their claims about the Holy Spirit. Next slide, John. Thank you. And so God is amazing. Um, when we look at the scriptures, now this verse here, John three thirty one, he that cometh from above is 
from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. So when their claim is about, uh, about us uh, being, uh, being in heaven and then coming to earth, uh, John here is making a declaration of the supremacy of the revelation through Jesus Christ uh, over all other prophets and prophecy having bec- uh, to that um, that has ever anything that's ever been said about God. The whole realm of man, whereas who originated from the earth or purely of the earth kind and can therefore speak only of earthly plain. So Joseph Smith cannot make claims uh, of anything to supersede what Scripture says. Those that are of the earth can only speak to earthly things, and then those that are uh, of heaven is above can only speak of heaven. And the ideal is t- uh, the contextually that verse is embedded in John to talk about Jesus has the right to make his declarations to reveal the revelation of God uh, from the prophets and its prophecy. So we can see here that uh, even with these scriptures that the head, Joseph Smith, who wrote the Book of Mormons, have been giving them information that they're being taught that does not line up with Scripture. And remember in Deuteronomy what it tells us that if this person says something outside of what God has already said, then it's not true. Now, God uh, does not have to use prophets anymore because the prophecy has already been fulfilled. The word in itself is taking on a whole new arena of meaning in our current culture. And people claim, well, I'm a prophet. Well, God only used prophets to real, reveal a revelation that is consistent with Scripture. We see fault in, in, um, in uh, the Mormonism prophet Joseph, and surely those that's claiming to have uh, a sense of claiming they're of a prophet, then they too are in error. So the Mormons, uh, we have uh, indicated just looking at the head, how they have missed it. And so, John, that next slide, if you don't mind for me, please. And so now we're going to move on to another discussion and so that we can begin to build uh, on uh, the Jehovah Witness. Now, the Mormons, my whole objective, and I, I hope that in my trying to strategically put this together, that I haven't robbed you of what the scriptures are saying. Play it back and look at those scriptures that dealt with Mormonism. When we talk about Mormonism, we, we just proven Joseph through some various scriptures about God, a God and, and Jesus Christ. And so now we're going to talk about the, uh, 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 the um, Jehovah Witness. And their website is uh, www.church.com. Uh, of jesuschrist.org www.churchofjesuschrist.org and that's where you can learn about Jehovah Witness okay now uh, Russell um, this guy uh, Charles Taz Russell um, he is the uh, the founder of Jehovah Witness now just like Joseph Smith Russell was raised a Presbyterian, but moved, uh, thank you, John, and moved from congr- uh, congressionalism in his youth, and he began to question Christianity when he was unable to define traditional tenets of Protest- Pro- uh, Protestantism. And so Joseph, had, he, um, he didn't understand about hell, the Trinity, and the, tr- the doctrine of predestinations. And so in 1870, uh, Joseph uh, went to hear a message uh, from a seven-day Adventist uh, preacher, and and so Jehovah Witness and Seven-day Adventist kind of uh, they're kind of um, um, somewhat in their teachings similar, um, and so Joseph, uh, uh, this guy Charles Taz Russell, just like Joseph Smith, uh, he believed Christianity had um, moved from the general apostasy, and so. Uh, according to the material that's provided on that website, the Watchtower, God used uh, Mr. 
Russell to establish the Watchtower organization in the 1870s to provide spiritual truth to understand about apostasy, generally using a falling away from the faith. For Jehovah Witness, a turning away from God uh, by leaving his organization, the Watchtower Bible and, and uh, track association is that when they turn away from that, they in themselves are turning away from the, the true word of God. And so, if John, if you would, show me that next slide. So Je Jehovah Witnesses are forbidden to read the apostate literature, uh, talking about um, the, the uh, scriptures. So they developed, Joseph Smith developed his own material. And uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 3 says, For a time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say, what their itching ears want to hear. And we see this, this scripture for being fulfilled in Joseph and, and Mr. Russell. And Mr. Russell, uh, was he a true prophet? According to the scriptures, uh, we can already see that he decided that when he began to hear from uh, the Protestant churches and uh, and, and I, when I the term Protestant to Great Commission and those that are listening, there are some things that have birthed out of what the, uh, that um, which is a truth when they came against Catholicism or against the church that uh, Mr. Zingley, who had these boys come and learn to the Bible. Uh, and they were translating from the Greek to Latin, and those guys told Zinglis, listen, uh, you guys, and we have missed it, and so uh, we're going to baptize ourselves again because you baptize us as babes, and the scripture says it's after you believed in, you're baptized. So, uh, again, pro that's a Protestantism, that's how, it, it's in, in Martin Luther, his thesis as well. But those are some of the um, uh, history behind how we got here. And I remember when Paige Patterson said, Dale, I want you to study, uh, study Baptist uh, theology. And he says, only one thing I want you not to miss is how the term Baptist came to be, and it's actually birthed out of Anabaptist. After those guys Zingley had used to, um, to help with translating, they saw that they were missing it, and they got baptized again, because that's after they believed, and they, they call them Anabaptists, baptized the second time. That's how the word Baptist actually made its way. But the idea Paige was trying to get me to understand is, we got to know the scriptures, and not to say that uh, all Baptist churches are, are absolute in a sound in their doctrine. Uh, they're, they're so, it's even where now they're taking the name Baptist off of their churches. But back to, uh, to, Je uh, to the Jehovah Witness, uh, this guy Russell, uh, according to, um, he established the Watchtower Organization in 1870 to provide spiritual truth to understand. So remember, I, we read that verse in Timothy, how Joseph, uh, how God has already said that people is going to have a, won't, won't sound teaching, but they're going to have an itching of their ears. And the problem that if you really look at what uh, Russell had a problem with was eternity and hell and the punishment of hell and the, uh, the doctrine, uh, the Trinity, the God, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, John, if you'll give me that next slide. So the, de the seven day, um, the Jehovah Witness, what they believed is uh, they didn't believe in eternal punishment. That's what um, Mr. Uh, Russell had a problem with it. In fact, one of their things is Jehovah Witness is that they think that when you die, that's it. Um, and you may go to heaven. You know, they're the ones that talk about 144,000 uh, are going. They know those are the leaders of the Watchtower, the Jehovah Witness. But then they're hoping to make it, and they're not sure that they're going to make it. But this scripture says that um, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but, but the righteous to eternal life. So the scriptures has given us what is true about the gospel. Uh, now, this other gospel, which is not a gospel, is making the claim through uh, Mormonism and through, um, through uh, Russell 
uh, things outside of what the gospel, the good news has declared. And so uh, what they're saying about eternity, Russell decided to create another doctrine because he didn't believe in this doctrine. Also, Romans 6 and 23 says, for the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So we can see in scripture that the Bible, thank you, the scriptures actually uh, clarifies that. And so also what the, um, what the, um, Je uh, Jehovah Witness about God, John, uh, if you'll show me that uh, next one. You remember I said that uh, how they developed their own uh, material to teach what they wanted to know about the scriptures, except for they don't use the scriptures. They've created their own Bible. They, that is called the uh, New World Translation. And sometimes, just like the Book of Mormons, if you're not careful and don't read the cover of that book carefully and the introduction pages, you may think that you really have a Bible. Now, the New World Translation, um, okay, so this verse here, uh, thank you, John. This verse here, Matthew 10 and 28, fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul, uh, are not able to kill the soul, but fear, rather fear him which is able to destroy the body, soul, the, the both soul and body in hell. Thank you, John. And so uh, that is where um, uh, Mr. Russell and his teachings, he don't want to hear that verse. Uh, is he a prophet or is he a, pro a false prophet? According to scripture, he is a false prophet, which should create doubt. So if I'm at the table of discussion, I want to be able to bring that out that that is the case. And next slide, John. This is what Jehovah Witness have done in their literature. Notice here Psalms 30, 83 and 18, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah are the most high over all the earth. Now, they use that word Jehovah and they move it in places in the Old Testament and in the New Testament to prove their position in this New World Translation. Um, God, uh, God's true followers can be identified by, and their uh, ideal is, uh, you often hear them say Jehovah. Now, when you hear people say Jehovah that's in the church, I'm not saying they're Jehovah Witness, but thank you, John. Uh, their true followers are identified by using the use of Jehovah. When they pray, the Bible tells us to say our Father, but they call him uh, Jehovah. Uh, many uh, witnesses believe that Jehovah, if not, uh, they have to, in order to invoke him in prayer, they have to say Jehovah instead of Father. Now, this, this watchtower where nearly uh, uh, the word Lord, they have replaced um, in the Old Testament and New World Translation, it's rendered Jehovah. So you can take a King, uh, a, a G King James Version and you can take a New World Translation and where you see Lord because uh, in the in the in the the King James, uh, it's uh, it has various nuances. Either Yahweh or Elohim; those two names. One speaks of God's polarity. Context will tell you which one is talking about. Or Yahweh, uh, which means covenant keeper, that He will provide what He said He would. So, in the New Living Translation, the book that this Joseph Smith has uh, produced, and you can go to their website and you can see that the, He's actually done this. The evidence that um, this is evidence to the Watchtower claim that the church has um, um, have stepping, st stepped away from God by using that one verse, uh, the word Jehovah. Now, I'm not being exhaustive in how they, they came up to that, but that's a beginning point to show you about their, their literature and this, this prophet. One is that he didn't believe eternity and punishment. The Bible clearly says that. And to move people outside of those that have itching ears, to move them outside, he provides them with the literature. Jehovah Witness in, in, uh, in sight on calling God Jehovah in prayer. Matthew, if you read that six, uh, chapter 6, 9 through 13. Uh, so Jehovah Witnesses, um, you'll, in fact, the name Jehovah um, does not appear in the Lord's um, prayer, even in the New World uh, Translation Bible, but they do say that when you pray, you should use Jehovah. The next slide, John. Thank you. And so just a little bit about what Jehovah Witnesses believe about God. Okay, and so now... 
uh, that what they believe about uh, Jesus Christ. And so uh, they believe that Jesus Christ was Michael, the archangel. Um, and so um, we see here that Hebrews 1 and 4 says, being made so much better than angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So uh, the Jehovah Witness believe that uh, Jesus Christ is the um, is Michael the archangel, and uh, uh, they, that's their claim, but Hebrews chapters 1 and 2 presents Jesus as greater than the angels. Next slide for me, John. And so just to show you the, uh, the intent of an angel, Jude 9 says, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, there if not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So there Jew, uh, in the book of Jude, Lord is talking about Kyrios, the one who has the authority, is the only one that can speak to this. And Michael, being the archangel, couldn't even speak to this. So when I said about in the slaughterhouse, how if you hit him in the head with a hammer or shoot him in the head, then the uh, the uh, animal will fall flat in this in this. Uh, um, it does not exist anymore as life knows it. And so if you want to prove that Joseph Smith and Mr. Russell um, have, thank you, Mr. Russell has missed it, just take the Bible and deal with them. Uh, next slide, John. And so the Jehovah Witness believe that Jesus was Michael the archangel. And now let's take a little bit of what they believe about the Holy Spirit, John, in this next slide, if you would. Uh, so they didn't believe in the Trinity and uh, they didn't believe they didn't think the spirit was actively involved as a person. And so I wanted to, to, to deal with it very briefly here. Second uh, Peter one and two elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the father through the sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace. Uh, unto you and peace be multiplied. Look what it says there. For knowledge of God, there is God, the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, and unto obedience and sprinkling of blood of Jesus Christ. We see the Trinity right there. I know they have a problem with how the name Trinity, the first person to observe it, but Scripture's already spoken to it. So when, when we have those extra biblical sources, it, if they're used to confirm Scripture, then uh, that that's, that I would say that's okay. And when I say it's okay, because the scripture is verifying that there's some truth to what they're saying and you don't really need what they have to say. But since it's out there and it's backing me up, that's just another testimony. So we see the foreknowledge of God. When we, when we talk about this foreknowledge of God, it, it comes from this, uh, this Greek word, Prognoskos and uh, Peter's teaching uh, in t uh, reaching into eternity to speak about something eternal with the English word foreknowledge. So when we see that foreknowledge, Peter says, let me step out of your time and take you back into eternity because this is the foreknowledge of God and he's using the spirit to sanctify you, dwelling within you. He's a person and he's bringing to remembrance and then the Holy and Jesus Christ who's involved in the Trinity. And so the next slide, John, and we're, we're finished. And so Jehovah Witness and Mormons, their prophet, the one who is introduced their truth, we've just shown you according to scripture and what they're claiming a restorational, restorational movement that they have this progressive revelation and it doesn't align with what the scripture says. Remember, I started out saying the scriptures are the authority. Here's the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit again. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, this man, Christ, Christos, is the Messiah. This is the prophecy being fulfilled that Peter talked about that foreign knowledge for this gift, forgiveness of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this gift, the Holy Spirit is a gift He's a gift and for, for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone who the Lord our God calls to himself. And look what he does here. He says, Kyrios, uh, Lord, is, he is 
the one, um, our God, Theos, this authority of this deity has called us to himself. And look at the three things that he utilized. Next slide, John, and we're finished. The next slide. And so here, 2 Corinthians 13 and 4, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is uh, Jesus' unmerited favor, what he did in a totality way out on the cross, and the love of God who sent his son, and now the, the fellowshipping of the Holy Spirit be with you, which is the promise that Jesus said he would send him. And so if we can take care of the head, thank you, John, if we can take care of the head, the one who's making all of these claims, we have just taken down anything that says that their information as a prophet is valid according to scripture. God bless you and God keep you. Mormonism and Jehovah Witness, I pray to God that I was able to help you tonight. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to this message from GCBC. For more information about our services and special events, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at ConnectGCBC. Or connect with us by checking out our website at gcbcfw.org.